Welcome everybody to the World GT Championship Season 10. After five races in two weeks, we head on over to the home of British motorsport, Silverstone, for week number three and round number six of the World GT Championship here on Racebot TV. Uh, delighted to have you all with us here. My name is Paul Smith. Joining me in commentary is Justin Prince, who's standing in for a uh, unwell Peter K, uh, Peter McKay, should I say? But um, Justin. Great to have you along. Welcome to the World GT Championship. Thank you very much. I'm very much excited to see how today fares out. We have plenty of talented drivers who competed the past few weeks in many different types of races, but today is going to be very challenging because we're at a track which will put these competitors through their paces in technical sections down the fast parts of the racetrack and as well try to make sure they sync themselves up for strategy. It's going to be intriguing to say the very least here at Silverstone. Absolutely. Let's take you through the format of today. So the first week of the championship, we had the sprint races. Last week at Road Atlanta, we had the two feature races. But today we've got the first of our four endurance races, an hour and 45 minute race, two mandatory pit stops coming up. Fuel is limited. So those drivers will have to play with their strategy here today. And well, Here's where we are. As I mentioned, first week was at Phillip Island, then Road Atlanta. We head, after a week off next week, we head on over to the Red Bull Ring, Hockenheim and Spa for the next tranche of three races. Then Belle Isle for an endurance race. That's going to be an intriguing round of this championship. Brands Hatch and Mategi, and then rounding off the championship, Suzuka, Sebring and Monza. But we are here at Silverstone, the home of British Motorsports. And Justin, there we see the trap map. What a, what a historic venue. A very historic venue that has hosted plenty of types of racing and has been the center of racing in Britain for many decades. Today is going to be very much challenged, though, for our competitors at a circuit that's changed a lot over the years. Village is going to be one of those sections where there could be trouble off of the start, but it's also a section where it's going to test drivers' abilities under braking. The run through Megas and Beckets is so critical because that run down the Hainer straight can be a spot where drivers can pick up slipstream that you're safe, draft one another, or in some cases, get a run towards Stowe. And of course, that run down the front straightaway can be so exciting. There's been many plenty moments in the final corners here at this facility. This is going to be a tricky track to make your way around here with its 18 turns. Absolutely. That's the uh, the venue, the uh, the challenge that uh, is ahead of the drivers. And well, let's take a look at the championship standings as they are at the moment. It is Josh Thompson who leads this round. Two second place finishes last time out. He will be delighted to uh, to get himself to the top of the standings. Ross McFarlane, of course, reigning champion, second place ahead of Kei Kashube. Then Phil Dennis in fourth place, of course, won race one of last week. David Baker fifth ahead of Pete Harrod with Alex Neller, Adam Watson, Kenneth Goldbranson and Jesse Jones rounding out the top 10 of your pro standings. In the Pro-Am standings, it is Mike Horder who leads that one. Only just 10 points ahead of Simon Field in second place. Chris Van der Ness, third place in the championship, just ahead of Adam Hedgecock. 
Ben Gregory and also Tim Perry together out on the standings. Then Evans, Woodhouse, Loyans and Rose round out the top 10. In the AM standings, it is Max Wolf who's got a quite a lead there over Tony Draper in second place. Lee Berridge rounding out the top three. Mike Blake, he was a challenger for the AM Championship last season. Down in fourth place ahead of Gladden, Hamilton, Stevens, Webster, Byram and Archer rounding out the 10 in your AM standings. And then the, the team's championship, of course, is not just driver's championship. There's a team's championship as well, and it's that 3M by Williams in XBS who lead this one over RSR by G Performance. BS Competition, their full outfit is in third place ahead of Pure Sims Esports. Pure Sims Sim Lab in fifth place ahead of Team Mad. And then the top of your Pro-Ams, Evo SR, leading that championship ahead of Boosted Virage with three Spires Motorsport and Boosted Motorsport rounding out the Pro-Am standings. So yes, we're here at Silverstone. It is going to be a challenging course and a ch challenging race for these drivers. An hour and 45 minutes. It's an endurance race for these drivers. This will suit some drivers over others. I'm thinking those drivers from BS Competition, from, from Inex, from uh, Williams Esports as well. Those two outfits, they're going to be quite strong here, Justin. This is really in their wheelhouse. Absolutely, especially with some of the experience of the World Championships. I've been keeping an eye on drivers throughout practice, and the drivers from those camps have been very consistent. They've been able to put in a lot of clean laps. They've also been able to pick up a lot of good speed, especially in Sector 2, I've noticed around the racetrack. But also, keep in mind, you have drivers such as Kashube, who I think can really impress for some of these competitors tonight, as well as some of the many others. It's going to be interesting, though, how the team dynamic in turn of today goes into play and how those discussions will take place here for tracks such as today yeah absolutely of course it's not just the pro drivers that were out there as well the pro am and am they're all pretty close in terms of uh, their sort of times and uh, uh, abilities out there so it'll be interesting to see how the grid lines up we will be able to give you the grid in uh, about half a minute's time or so uh, but the first endurance race of the season here, Justin, it's a completely different mindset you have to take into this type of race compared to those 20 minute or 40 minute races. Absolutely, in 20 minutes or 40 minutes, your mindset is simple. Just go full out, try and push as hard as you can, try and get as many positions as you can. With endurance racing, it's not quite that simple because you try and do that, it ends up getting yourself potentially into attrition or putting you off cycle for strategy. So you need to think big picture when it comes to endurance style racing to make sure you save enough gas, position yourself to be able to leapfrog your way forward slowly but efficiently, and also be able to pick your spots. That's going to be also very critical for all our competitors today as a result to make sure they remember there is a lot of time to work with to be able to move on forward. You take what? that time, you can move on forward. Well, we uh, we need to move on forward because it's a short short pace lap here so let's give you the grid and look at that phil dennis whole position front row joined by ross mcfarlane then keiko shube with matthew turnbull on row number two row three is nathan lewis and josh thompson row four then for oscar Cooper with kenneth school branson row five for elias seppinen and jack sedgwick row six for jesse jones and ash sutton Row seven for Alex Neller and the first few Pro-Am drivers, Aaron Rose, really good result for him on that row number seven. Row eight for Michael Evdoker and David Baker with Adam Watson and Joel Evans on row number nine. Row 10 then, it's Elliot Harper and Pete Harrod. Row 11, Chris Wood and Christian Rose. Ross Nicholson, Tim Perry on row number 12 with Ben Gregory, Chris Van Ness on row 13. Brian Lyons and Mike Horder in row number 14. Billy Fletcher, Ashley Finch rounding out row number 15. Miguel Freitas shares row number 16 with Max Wolf, the top of your AM drivers, ahead of Andy Shield and JB Mercedes on row number 17. Row 18 for Bradley Hulse and Tony Draper. Row 19, Jason Dilworth and Lee Berridge with Ryan Hamilton and Andy Archer rounding out row number 20. Row 21 for Paul Webster and Simon Field. Adam Hedgecock and Simon Neller share row number 22. Matt Bunn and 
Chris Byram, row number 23. Number 24 is for Tom Stevens and Lars Van Rijn. Row 25, Michael Blake and Lewis Archer. We're nearly at the back of the grid here. Matt Woodhouse and Simon Underhill share row number 26 with John Roberts and Nicholas Salaputis rounding out row number 27. There we go then, grid all set for the start of this race. The pace car pulls away at the front of your field. And just final quick thought here, Justin, as we've got a full grid here. 56 cars all going in towards turn one. That's going to be uh, quite the challenge. It's going to be a really thrilling race as a result here to be able to play yourself into the right positioning. But it's going to be so critical this first lap or two to settle yourself in, get some space and get into a rhythm or else it's going to be really tricky with how many cars you're going to have to battle with today. Well, your pole sitter, Phil Dennis, rounds the final corner at Club Corner and he's going early. The green flag will fly and we are underway for the first endurance race of the season here in the World GT Championship. Down in towards turn number one, Ross McFarlane chasing down Phil Dennis trying to get through. The question is, can everybody get through Abbey and Farm? So far, so good as they head towards Village. And we've got into Village and cut an instant. Jack Cedric is one of those drivers. Matthew Turnbull and Ashley Sutton all involved in that one. They've got to be careful with their rejoin back out on the track. But so far, so good. That's the only real instant that I've seen out there on track, Justin. That was the one major section off the start we were fearing is drivers trying to break in hard and with how tight that apex is, there is a lot of potential for contact there. We've seen that unfortunately come into play a little bit, but all those competitors have been able to keep on moving. That's the bright side for them. They can try and recover. They just have to focus on getting back into rhythm and try and keep the damage control to a minimum. Yeah, Turnbull's down to 35th, Sutton down to 37th, Jack Sedgwick down 44 places, down to 54th. So almost at the back there, just uh, two places in front of last place for Jack, so uh, not a good time for him. Drivers heading to Maggots and then Beckett's, this uh, section of track updated back in the early 90s. And they really did improve this uh, this part of the track. There's nothing better than seeing race cars going absolutely flat out through that section to be able to uh, change direction so quickly. Down the hangar straight for the first time, and everybody is in just one long queue here as we're heading into Stoke Corner. Couple of moves, couple of attempts at moves trying to be made, especially in the mid pack, but nothing forthcoming. There's a couple of drivers battling in front of the, uh, the car that we're looking at. That's one of the uh, Craig setup shop cars in the Porsche, making his way past, so uh, up in position for them. But out the final claw of the club corner for the first time. So that is a lap in the books here. It comes thick and fast around this track, but it's still hard fought out there. You would think this is the start of a sprint race here. Ryan Hamilton currently leading a gaggle of cars. Simon Field is one of those. There's a Century Sim Racing car moving its way past. Back onto the brakes then for Field and he's battling away with Andy Archer and Archer so far trying to hang on to that position and doing so so far as the 26 move behind Simon Field up a position in this race so far but uh, good clean start to the race here Justin that's what we wanted to see here I think the drivers all took the uh, the advice and just took it easy on lap one yeah it's looking nice and calm so far for the most part we still have drivers fighting obviously side by side such as this and keeping things busy in the 40s overall on the board but it's going to be intriguing, I think, to see some of the battles, especially with the AM class, with how close things are getting amongst those competitors. A lot of those drivers qualify close to an error on the grid. Those competitors, I think, are going to be fighting aggressively for positioning. But for others, it's going to be for some of the air classes like the Pro M and the Pro. Get yourself a buffer to be able to try and pull away for your positions. You can see this gaggle making its way through Sector 3 towards the Hainer Strait. Yeah, through the sweeping corners. Seppinen's dropping down the order quite fast. He's got a slow down penalty. It's so easy to pick that up through that final right-hander on uh, 
Beckett, Maggots and Beckett. So uh, he got himself a slowdown penalty. He drops down the order. He's fighting away his Seppinen with, I believe that's Elliot Harper who's made his way past. Yes, he does. So the Pro-Am driver, who's in fact your top Pro-Am driver so far, moves ahead of Seppinen. Here's Tim Perry for Three Spires Motorsport in his uh, BMW through turn one and uh, this, I'm, I'm still getting used to this new section. It's 10 years old as this, but I'm still getting used to it. Here's a replay the. Yep, that's exactly what we were fearing. Just that close contact trying to get to the apex and in turn, they slide it off and that could have been a disastrous rejoin for a split second as my goodness. One of the cars had to really dodge to the right there to make sure they didn't slam into the side end of one another. Yeah, that was uh, Turnbull who got turned round. I think it was just the slightest of touches with Josh Thompson, it looked like. And uh, yeah, you have to be careful. The race stewards, by the way, there is stewarding post events. So there's no live race stewards, but they do look at events that happen after the race. And they do look at lap number one as a, as a matter of course. So if there is anything dodgy or any sort of dodgy rejoin, then... Uh, they will be paying close attention to that. Here's Jason Dilworth down in 37th place. And he's currently got Ryan Hamilton, his teammate, behind him. And in front of him, battling through Cop's Corner, is uh, Lee Berridge in the BMW. So Boosted got a couple of Nomad Sim Racing cars behind them. And behind them, as well as one of the 3M cars. So it's a real gaggle of cars down there, that's Matt Bunn who was at the back of that one, but you can see on board you can see that rear view, uh, that, that monitor that they have on the dashboard it really helps these drivers does that, but um, all you'll be seeing is a, is a Porsche in your mirrors, in fact forget that, because down the inside into Stoke Corner, nicely done nice and done with a nice pull of the draft and some good momentum I've noticed that their cars were fairly sporting in practice as we see how things shape up towards the front. Things are staying pretty buttoned up amongst your top three. But there is some separation starting to build up for some of the drivers, such as Gabranson, who is currently battling in what has turned into a second pack of cars. About fifth on back, they've already lost nearly 1.6 seconds to Nathan Lewis. Yeah, Kekashube is really having to be defensive on from Kenneth Gabranson in that Porsche behind him so uh, that's kind of holding up that gaggle of cars and I can tell you that that gaggle of cars that queue of cars goes from fifth place all the way down to 29th so, <laughs> so that's how close this queue of cars is at the front of your field of course we've been looking at the uh, the battle that's been happening elsewhere on the left hand side of your screen right there and uh, yeah Ashley Sutton then he's a recovering driver He's currently down in, uh, look at the time screen, 31st at the moment. So he's working his way back through the field as Ash. Now, if somebody is good at overtaking, it has to be um, Ash. He, he's an incredible driver, has a knack of knowing when he can make an overtake and make it stick. And uh, he does use sim racing to help keep his uh, sharpness up when he's not racing in the uh, British Touring Car Championship. So uh, it shows how sim racing can have such good... Uh, such good uh, help towards their real life racing it can help you learn your marks at a lot of racetracks to get yourself situated to where you can get yourself some seat time if you don't have that opportunity to do so elsewhere it can help a lot for many different drivers and many different paths but for sudden very least he's got the pace Gonna make it now near three wide with one of the cars who had to slow down and actually finch to be able to jump up a couple spots in one straight on the left side well, if you ever want to take advantage, that's the point that you do it. On the right-hand side, Kuda E-Motorsports uh, e battling away with a boosted car. So that's the uh, triple seven, Simon Nella. Chris Byron making his way past Simon, or is he? Because Simon's still keeping it side by side. Not the best run into Club Corner. And, well, Byron taking that wider line, it's worked out. And Chris Lars Van Rijn, poor Lars, he doesn't know where to where to go really, really in all of that. Yeah, a little bit of a hornet's nest among some of these cars near contact. And that's a little bit of a sketchy place to try and make a move with how tight the apex can be. We've seen the trouble in this section earlier. Mark Woodhouse has just been able to take advantage of all this and say, you know what, I'll take a couple spots. 
Yeah, Mark working his way forward in that Immortal car. Of course, one of Ziri's sponsors, Immortal. So uh, see them supporting the championship and also racing a team as well in this championship. It's good to see. So Woodhouse to the head of that little gaggle, although he's coming under pressure once again from the uh, Simon Nella Las Van Rijn battle, which is. Well, that's going to be a change of position there. And if Nella's not careful, he's going to lose out to the Evo SR car, the uh, the Porsche of Tom Stevens. He's trying to work his way past through Woodco. And also, we've got battling on the right-hand side of your screen as well. So plenty to look at in these early stages here, Justin. I mean, I, I, you kind of expect action in this series, and that's exactly what we're getting in these early stages. Well, one of the best opportunities to be able to gain positions is within the first 10, 20 minutes of an endurance race. And we've seen some cases, some of the approaches. I'm going to try and make moves. That was near contact there with how tight that attempt that a move was. Trying to dive it towards the left side. You have to be smart with these types of moves in this situation because it can put you behind the eight ball if you do and get yourself involved in trouble. And for some of these drivers, they've been showing some decent respect a month's winner, no major bouts of incidents, but they have been willing oh, to make it side by side in some different areas. Off. There's a car off Brian Lyons, and we're getting to see the reason why. And that's the recovering Ash Sutton, just getting it down the inside, and there's just the slightest of contacts. And Lyons finds himself off in the kitty litter, out in the uh, the weeds there, out on the uh, runoff in Stur Corner. I think there was room given between both of them, so I think it's just a case of two lines coming together there, it seemed. Mm -hmm. But still, at the front, we've got some great action. It is still Phil Dennis leading this one. Ross McFarlane in second place in the Lamborghini for Pure Sims uh, eSports, and then uh, Josh Thompson in that Williams eSports coloured car, in that uh, frame by Williams in XPS. Here's Ashley Finch, who's had more issues out there. That's coming out of the loop, heading into Aintree. Not the best of starts for Finch whatsoever. Now all the way back down the running order to 50th position as a result of some of those mistakes. But getting back to the discussion towards the front, Bill is a very talented driver that can hit his consistent marks. Has showed a lot of pace in multiple different types of cars, Paul across the iRacing service, and he's using that to his advantage with this clean air, with that good qualifying performance. Give a shout out to, to Thompson with this plus three so far on the day, position himself as well as we take a look. More drivers having some slipping and sliding and more having some fun in the grass. Oh, the two teammates make contact with each other. Kudri Motorsport. Well, Chris Byron was having an issue and then his teammate thinks, oh, come down the inside. Oh, there's my teammate there. Slightest of contact. Fortunately, it's quite a low speed corner as Brooklyn's, but still not ideal to uh, to make a slight bit of contact with your teammate. Van der Ness and Matt Turnbull working together and getting ahead is Turnbull. He's the recovering car, and if we're not careful, the 32, Van der Ness could lose out to Mike Horder as well into Abbey Corner once again, but taking that wider line, that Porsche, that you do get to carry the speed through there. So uh, that means that the Evo SR driver stays in that position, but still, Turnbull into 24th, Van der Ness 25th. Well, Andy Scheel, he's somebody who's on a bit of a run, plus six positions in this race. He's trying to work his way forward as well in that Mercedes. And he's dragging along with him, JB Mercida, in one of the Team Mad cars. There you see positions gained on the left-hand side there. In your top ten, David Baker up six places. You, know, you have got some big movers in this one in the early going. I mean, further down, Matt Woodhouse is up eight positions as well. But there's some big losses out there as well, Justin. I mean, the obvious ones being Turnbull, Sutton and Sedgwick losing the big positions right in that uh, turn three incident at Village on lap one. Yeah, minus 20, minus 20, minus 24 respectively for those drivers still. So it's going to be a long climb ahead for some of those drivers to be able to cover. Sudden is not 
willing to be patient though with some of these spots I've noticed with how tightly he's been diving it in. If he sees an opening, he's been willing to take it. The downside is he still has to deal with some left side damage now the rest of this run as a result of that contact we seen a little while ago. So that could affect him a little bit, but it looks like for sudden, he knows his marks, obviously around this track. Yeah, that was Bradley Hulse that he worked his way past in the year one car. And Hulse is now trying to fight off Jason Dilworth as well. So here we are on board with the Nomad Sim Racing driver. And Dilworth under brakes into Club Corner. Uh, yes, yeah, so you, you give Sutton a, an inch and he will take it. That, that is the type of driver that he is. He is a de decisive one. He will, you'll make the move and if, and if you close the door, it, it, it's that mentality of I, I'm making that move whether you like to or like it or not. So, oh, Evdurka's had an incident out there. And that's up at the loop. It's so easy to have contact there now. Who was that that he had contact with? Oh, well, we'll be able to have a look here, Justin. I believe that may have been a send from one of the drivers who Al just came Tadella. out of pit lane. Yes, and Joel Evans, who was one of the top drivers in the Pro-Am, ended up colliding into the incident. That was a bit of an ambitious move. Uh, I would say from uh, Alex. Uh, ambition above execution right there. And that means that him and Evdoka move down the field. And yeah, you made the point as well. Your top pro arms really getting involved in that as well. Worth pointing out, top three is Dennis, McFarlane and Thompson. There they are. You can see them on your screen. Your top pro-am is still Elliot Harper. He's in 14th place right now. Uh, the second place pro-am is actually Christian Rose. Only a second, only a second week of sim racing back after 18 months out. So he's back up and running. And Ross Nicholson is the third place pro-am driver uh, in the standings right now. And then further down in your am standings it is max wolf who leads that one ahead of bradley hulls and then tony draper in third place but um yeah things oh sorry i do apologize justin you are you are absolutely right completely missed out aaron rose who is actually your top pro am driver as there's joel evans onto pit road and obviously that damage going to be big in terms of the impact here having to take the time to come down to the pit lane will lose evans all this time and take him off cycle for the strategy paul because as we talked about two mandatory pit stops for these competitors half the fuel 75 percent the limit to make sure of that as well so for Ooh. evans he's gonna be off cycle phil dennis showing off some uh, rally cross style uh, breaking into brooklyn's right there the back end kicked right out on him under the braking and that's given ross mcfarlane a little bit of a sniff at potentially going for the lead is he going to make a move into cop's corner well according to one person you can't make moves into cop's corner but here they go now they're going to stay single file if i'm ross mcfarlane right now because of phil dennis's pace you just sit behind get your fuel saving done here justin yeah, I noticed he lifted going down the old pit straight, heading towards those corners as well. So he had the opportunity to do so if he wanted to. I think he would have had the momentum to make it side by side. But right now, McFarlane is just saying, you know what? Just pull me on the track. I'm going to use you to save because keep in mind, McFarlane showed the raw pace and practices the second quickest overall in the entire session. I think he knows he's got the car. It's just a matter of just waiting for the right spot to be able to take advantage well we've seen this all last season in the endurance races last season ross mcfarlane did exactly this he just sat behind got his fuel saving in saved himself one maybe two laps of fuel so that then that final pit stop of the day means that they end up uh, short fueling and making the jump in the pit stop so as you've mentioned time and again, Justin, strategy is going to be so key around this venue and in this race. And if he can keep Phil Dennis in front, that's all the better for his fuel consumption for us. Exactly. You want to be able to get that mark. And it's something that you'll see with that chance. There's been some drivers, too, I've noticed trying to let the car roll a little bit more. Some of them going towards the clutch as well. Just that touch bit to make sure they hit those marks. 
Josh Thompson's also in the same boat where he's able to just ride along and save as well and try and get himself in that same picture. Yep, and we're on board with Josh here, in fact. So the uh, 3M by Williams in XBS. That's a real uh, co cobbling together of three drivers who didn't have a team who decided, well, let's team up and, and have a race. But they're very much individuals in that team, we found out last week uh, when we spoke to Josh after uh, the Road Atlanta event. Now, I'm just having a look at my timing screen. I can tell you that the top five are all lapping within a tenth of each other in terms of the average lap. So the last five laps on average, they were all pretty much even, apart from Keiko Shube, who's been a, about half a tenth quicker than the cars in front of him. That everybody else in the field is two minutes or higher for the average lap time. So the, the, these front five have so much more pace compared to everyone else out here as we look at the uh, the 3M car uh, battling away and that's going to be uh, if I look at my timing scheme correctly that'll be uh, Chris Van Der Ness and Andy Shield battling away on the right hand side with your leaders on the left hand side of the screen and look who's creeping into that fight as well. It's Sutton who's joining the fray with that raw pace as well shown by his teammates up towards the front. So these drivers have shown at least in the mid pack that they're willing to fight. Some of them have saved a little bit, but others have tried to pry the door open, take advantage of opportunities. I've seen Max Wolf, for example, who is the fifth car in this line, for example, pass by a couple of these competitors in various tricky spots. So these drivers are not afraid to leapfrog one another if they're in the different classes right now. Well, we're on board with JB Mercedes on the left-hand side of your screen, and you can see them. So it's Mercedes, Porsche, 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 all in the line here in two, and then another Porsche behind them as well. Two Team Mad cars, there's two uh, Evo SR cars involved in that as well. And yeah, this is great stuff. In that mid-pack, as we come out of Aintree, down the Wellington Strait, of course, named after the Wellington Bombers that used to uh, take off from here in the uh, Second World War. So uh, it is an old airfield, a little bit of a, a wiggle there from Van der, Van der Ness, but able to hold on to it in front of uh, Mercida with uh, Miguel Freitas right behind, and Max Wolf not that far behind. And yeah, as you mentioned, Ash Sutton catching up to that group of cars behind them working his way forward. So uh, he'll be starting to get that little bit of a slipstream from those cars in front to help him pull forward into that battle. But we are, what, an hour and 23 minutes remaining in this race. There's plenty of time remaining in this one, Justin. There's no point, as you point out at the start of the race, there's no point in really pushing hard in these early stages or else you will make mistakes like Van Der Ness right there. And that's the opportunity for Mercedes. Exactly what he was looking for to try and pressurize the mistake to try and move forward now with this fell team mad car. Watch this, can he clear on by? You can see a little bit of a bubble there. Ness is really struggling with grip, it looks like now, as he gets shuffled up by multiple cars. I wouldn't be surprised if he's been overheating those rear tires. Here comes Sutton to the inside of Van der Ness. And well, he's gone from being at the front of that queue of cars to the back of that queue of cars in one straight and one corner. That's, uh, that's how quickly it can happen here in the World GT Championship. And well, he's dropped down the order. So Van der Ness then down to 30th place after being in 26th place. Here's something that's happened to Bradley Hulse. Ended up on the grass, takes a spin. More importantly, though, Justin keeps it out of the wall. And out of the sand trap as well, able to keep on going currently now in 50th position is in ahead. Anson Pete doing a very nice job holding on to some solid positioning so far inside the top 15, up six spots so far. Yeah, Harrod's doing a great job. Of course, season seven champion is Pete Harrod, so he knows how to win a championship. Oh, Paul Webster. Oh, that's a big twitch. Oh, and he won't be able to get the car stopped there. Hopefully he doesn't wipe out anyone. Oh, unfortunately, he did collect somebody there. I didn't quite catch it. It's one of the boosted cars. And now, is that going to be Nella? Uh, no, it's not going to be Nella. It's Lee Berridge, I believe, who was involved in that one. But 
as soon as that car gets on the grass there, Justin, and starts out of control, there's very little that Paul can do. He's a, he's a passenger at that point. And the tough thing for Barrage 2 with the angle of the hit that just happened there is, I think that's a suspension braking hit with where it was on the right rear tire. So that's a car that will likely have to come down towards the pit lane. Here's Michael Blake, one of the other Immortal cars, and he's going for a spin out of Luffield Corner. So these Porsches, they do not look secure and stable on the longer runs here, Justin, as well. Chris Wood is battling it out with the Simlabs car. And Wood will be trying to get ahead of Michael Evdurk, of the recovering Michael Evdurk. You can see that damage to the front left corner of his car. And Wood is all over the back of him, unable to uh, make some moves. As uh, Miguel Freitas, one of the first cars onto pit road, I would imagine, for a planned stop here, Justin. A 12 laps on their stint, so an interesting decision to go for an early stop here just before an hour and 20 minutes to go, but this may be indeed part of that strategy thought process to try and think about the fuel for later on the race, try and put yourself into a different cycle and break away from a pack such as this, try and see if the undercut call gets you somewhere different. And right now, I'm curious to see how it plays out. Keep in mind, you can already see a bit of that pop up on the left side with how things are getting busy here with this fight. Certainly is. Really intriguing. Chris Wood doing a, uh, a sterling job trying to put the pressure on, but hat, tip of the hat then to Michael Evdurka for uh, absorbing all this pressure. They're four seconds behind the next car up, which is Billy Fletcher. This is 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th that you're seeing on screen. There's the, uh, the battle graphic very little between the four cars as they head into Maggots and Beckett's. We've got three different cars there. We've got a Mercedes, a Porsche, and a Lamborghini in this queue of cars. Three different styles of car, and it's, uh, it's really showing. You've got the, uh, the front engine Mercedes AMG, you've got the rear engine Porsche, and then the mid engine Lamborghini. Three different styles, and it's gonna be Chris Wood making some moves in front there. You can see him side by side, trying to make that stick through Stur Corner, and I think Evdurka's just got to admit defeat. I would possibly think about coming down to Pit Road, because you do get one free repair in this series in, the, in a race. And at this point, you may have noticed the crank up on the left front, he might be one of the drivers saying, you know what, I'm going to have to do that, but at the same time, you don't want to get yourself too off cycle by having to use it already. Keep in mind, too, you have Sutton who's ready to say hello to this grouping as well, who's already crushed in his in front, entire front nose just about, trying to pass by some of these cars. So you have to keep that in mind with how the aggression's about to pick up with moves such as this. Yep, thank you very much. That's one spot. I've got Mike Horder in front of me now. Uh, when will I make the move on him? Now, this is two Lamborghinis against each other here. Ashley Sutton in that Pure Sims eSports car looking ahead, looking to try and make a move. Uh, Mike Horder not making any moves yet. Michael Evdurka coming flying into Brooklyn's there. That Mercedes really looking solid going into that corner. Behind them, I think Mike Horder went a little bit wide there through Woodcup. Across the, the uh, curb cam there. Through, this is Woodcup, that was Luffield that they just went through, should I say. But Sutton. Having a look, he's trying to get in the, the mirrors of Horder. He's trying to force a mistake out of Horder. There was a little one right there, and there goes the inch. Does he take it? He thought about it. That would have been a little bit of a tight squeeze with those turtles. Yeah, that was uh, an intake of breath from me, and I'm just watching it, let alone what it would have been like for uh, Sutton. But fair play to Horder. He's not just moving over for Sutton, but Sutton's got the slipstream right now. Pops out the draft into the braking zone. Oh, he's so good on the brakes, is Sutton. Hits the brakes absolutely perfectly. Gets his apex, gets the position. That is up a position up to 25th now. That's only a loss of 13 positions compared to where he started. Um, just to keep you up to date, Matt Turnbull is up to 19th, and Jack Sedgwick up to 29th 
in all of this. So those three recovering from that lap one incident. But this is tremendous racing in this one. It's been breathless from the green flag here, Justin. This is tremendous stuff. Absolutely beautiful picturesque racing throughout the entire pack with all these groupings starting to get into a rhythm. Look at that, though, towards the left side. You may have noticed Sudden saying, hello, you open up the door. I'm going to pry it wide open once again. Now, I, I will say that the Shield and Evdoka, there's no team orders in Pure Sims, but they won't exactly make it difficult for Sutton if he is that much, if he's considerably quicker than them. They'll play the percentages and think, do you know what, it'll be best just to try and hang on to his coattails and try and follow him through the field here. That's what would be the wise thing to do. Although, last season we did have at Bathurst the incident between Sutton and Evdoka. So uh, those two, they have got previous and they are of course compatriots from Pure Sims. Speaking of enough of Pure Sims driver, Pure Sims Sim Lab, Pete Harrod, He's moved up now to, uh, he's in 16th place. So he's actually lost a couple of positions. Tim Perry has moved ahead of him and he's now got the uh, Craig setup shop car of Christian Rose behind him and a, a whole gaggle of cars of Ross Nicholson, Matt Turnbull, Ben Gregory and Billy Fletcher behind them. So uh, a big gaggle, gaggle of cars here, all fighting out for 15th place here, Justin. Some heavy battling indeed right now, and these drivers currently in terms of pace are running the two minute to two oh ones. A couple of them have been hitting the 159s with some of the drafts. So it's one of those packs that you see come into play when it comes to endurance racing. Keep in mind, you start to once you get into rhythm, break up into smaller packs such as this one, albeit with now seven, eight cards in the groupings for some cases. But it all comes down to, again, the strategy of trying to save a little bit, trying to get yourself inside the draft lock. And if you see the opportunities, you may see one or two drivers say, you know what, I'm going to try and make a leap on four. So it's just about finding those spots. And if you have some drivers, let's say just in front of the road, you see with Matt Turnbull, who might be a bit quicker, you have to be able to try and latch onto their draft and let them pull you forward to keep things going for your strategy and your race. Yeah, Turnbull moving ahead of Christian Rose there. And uh, Ross Nicholson right behind Rose now. They're two Pro-Am drivers, and as is Ben Gregory and Billy Fletcher. So uh, we've got a gackle of Pro-Am drivers all out there together right now. And I can tell you that Nathan Lewis at the front has caught up to your race-leading pack. He's just about in slipstream territory in fact he's norman just just about he's right in there in slipstream territory i've been keeping an eye on nathan he has been putting in some really quick laps these last few laps and he's brought him up to this lead group so now it's four cars together for the race lead and josh thompson will be uh, now having to draw his attention to his rear view mirror as well as looking forward yeah, the gap was up to two seconds between Lewis and the race later, and he had fallen out of slipstream range for a little while or so, but over the past five, he's been on average two tenths quicker than Thompson. So he's definitely got the raw pace. Look at that on the right side of your screen, though. Near three wide with some of the team mad cars. There's Chris Wood there. There's one of the free m cars at Sandy Shield. You've got Mike Horder there involved as well. And one of the team mad cars, Chris Wood, is saying, forget that. I'm bailing, I'm going to the pit lane. It's nice and safe in there. And well, he's taking his first pit stop right now. But that group then, which you saw, Shield, Order, the Sedgwick involved in that, JB Mercida, Max Wolf, they're all together out there on track. So uh, again, another one, Sedgwick, who's working his way through the field. But we're back to this battle. Pete Harrod there in the uh, Pure Sim Sim Lab uh, out of the Lamborghini. There's no, no Audis in this race, which is really surprising this season, but uh, I think drivers have fallen out with that one. And here's Adam Watson running a bit wide. He's fighting it out with Alex Neller. So Neller and Watson in Lamborghini and Porsche. They've had a, a switch of positions, it appears. So Watson down to 13th, Neller in 12th. And Ben Gregory going side by side in the three Spires car. He is battling out with Billy Fletcher there in the Vulcan Sim Racing car. So uh, they're fighting it out for 20th and 21st places as they head 
into Cobb's corner. So, uh, yeah, intriguing battles going on. We are reaching towards the first pit stop type start of the uh, pit stop cycle for all those drivers out there. Phil Dennis, still the race leader ahead of Ross McFarlane with Josh Thompson in third place. The best Pro-Am driver is Aaron Rose in ninth place. He's a few positions ahead of Elliot Harper, who's the second of the Pro-Am drivers down in 14th. And Tim Perry, 15th place, rounds up your podium for your Pro-Ams. And in your amateur class, it's still Max Wolf who leads that one down in 28th. Tony Draper, second place in AM, 31st. And Ryan Hamilton in 32nd, in third place in AM. So that's how the different classifications stand at the moment. Of course, if you do want to keep up to date with everything that's happening in this race, well, do head on over to racebot.tv forward slash timing two. That's racebot.tv forward slash timing two to keep up to date with everything that's happening in this race and you'll see that Matt Turnbull is making the move right there trying to make his way past Tim Perry but Perry is putting up a staunch defense there in that three spires car and now want to make things easily I've been noticing drivers in this group have been willing especially down this straightaway to swerve their way to the left side of the racetrack towards Brooklyn's to defend a Turnbull just seems to have that raw pace. Same for Sutton to be able to just roll their way into the corner entry, be very solid on the brakes, be able to take advantage. And now I think that just opened up a bit of the hornet's nest for some of these drivers right behind, though, who want to go. Go they will, that's for sure. Christian Rose, the uh, Pure Sims with Craig setup shop car, trying to take advantage of that. Tried to take advantage of Turnbull making his way past Tim. Unfortunately, no gap forthcoming for Rose, so he's having to, again, be patient, wait for the opportunity to arise. Now, let's have a look. Replay, Michael Blake, what's happened here, Justin? We've ended up snapping to the left side of the racetrack here, all the way to the edge of the tire barrier. Where, again, that was the run through cops where he's just running on his own and then just snapped it around, and it just seems... What we were talking about earlier with these Porsches starting to really come to fruition now as some of these drivers are starting to peel one in. Yeah, so Oscar Cooper, the, out of the top 10, heading on to pit road. So I would say he's the first of the front runners to decide now's a good time to get yourself onto pit road. I need to get yourself a bit of a... Um, need to get a bit of a free space out there, but right now... I'm, I'm having a look at the track map that I've got on my timing screen here. There isn't actually that much free space out there on track. Michael Evdoka finally comes down onto pit road with uh, his damage, so he'll get that fixed. So too will Jack Sedgwick. So Sedgwick decided now's the time to take that first pit stop. You'll generally not see drivers take tyres here. They'll just try and go all the way just with fuel stops here, Justin. Yeah, it's expected to be that case to make sure you limit the amount of time at pit road. Some of the drivers who took service earlier had as quick as 18 second pit stops for those who made scheduled appearances. Some of the drivers now taking 31 seconds to be able to fill up more in the tank since they were able to push longer on the stints. So that's something to keep in mind for a couple of the drivers who are off cycle and or who are all trying different things when it came to those earlier pit stops about 10, 15 minutes ago. Keep in mind as well, these leaders are about to re reach some traffic, including the 777 who's just up the road, who's had to come in for an off-cycle pit stop already once in this race. Yeah, that was uh, for repairs for Simon Nella. And in fact, fortunately for your race leader, Simon heads on to pit road, so he doesn't need to worry about him. The next one up the road is going to be, by the looks of things, Paul Webster in one of these immortal Porsches as uh, we've got cars heading on to pit road kenneth gold branson is the next one of your lead pack heading on to pit road right now so that pit stop cycle is happening your leader has got a a, a, a a decent gap i would say between him and the next traffic although there's, there's about three or four cars ahead of him on the road there's gold branson on the right hand side of your screen looking for his pit box 
and get his service done here. It's worth pointing out, Jack Cedric has been sat on pit road for a minute 35. I think he is done for this race. Um, as uh, Chris Byram has just come out of pit road and Simon Nella is now pit road as well. So I think Jack Sedgwick, after that early incident on lap one, has not been able to get a free repair in here, and that's put him all the way down the field. Kenneth Paul Branson, I can tell you, 24.2 seconds on pit road. So some drivers going for a shorter pit stop now and then go for the longer pit stop towards the end, and vice versa. So it's interesting to see how that will all plan out here. Yeah, especially in grouping such as the one you're seeing on screen, but also with how it plays out for the race leaders, because if some of these drivers feel more confident in cleaner air or being in different packings, that's going to be significant to where you can gain some time, but in some cases, lose time having to fight your way through some of the air traffic poles. So it's going to be big picture racing where you're hoping things play out perfectly for you and you don't get held up in a gaggle such as this one where you fight side by side, where you lose a bit of ground, where you try and in turn follow along and try and hope that they don't lose too much time. Yes, yeah, the, uh, the leaders are heading in towards the, uh, the end of the lap again. Here's this battle for 16, Billy Fletcher, Pete Harrod, Ross Nicholson and Ben Gregory all together as they head on down. Ahead of them is, of course, Christian Rose and Tim Perry. Jesse Jones now, the latest of the RSR by G performance cars onto pit road. And that is a big moment for Lee Berridge. Oh, and he just kisses the wall there. Not the heaviest of impacts. He should be able to go until the second pit stop before he needs to do anything with that car. Needs to be careful with the car though, Paul, too, because remember that fast repair slash free repair you had available? You had to use it for that suspension damage from that hard yes. hit from before. So, in our words, he has any more major mistakes like that where you're heading towards a wall, you can't afford to take a major hit because that can essentially end your day. Certainly can. Race leaders are coming up to a couple of battling drivers, by the way, and uh, one of them's just getting well out of the way. Now, this series does have slightly different blue flag rules compared to most GT series. They do ask that you know, the drivers don't exactly jump out the way, but help facilitate the faster cars come through. So uh, that was, uh, I believe it was Lewis Archer who decided, you know what, let's get out the way. Oh, no, I don't think it was Lewis Archer. I think it was actually Chris Byram who decided, let's get well out the way there and uh, let all the leaders through, and then they'll get back up to pace. So but you do have to facilitate the leaders, but it's you're not expected to just pull over and stop. Exactly, and the main thing when it comes to traffic is the one thing drivers prefer is you be predictable. Yeah. Because if you're unpredictable and say, let somebody go in the middle of the racing line, I've seen before coming to play, coming out of Stowe, it leads to disaster and tears as well. If you end up, say, having it right about here, you get frustrated if you're the lead pack because that's a bad spot to reach them. Yeah, and look at that. Dennis has taken advantage of that. McFarlane's not happy, but, well, where does he expect the, the lap car of Paul Webster to disappear to? You know, it's all well and good flashing your lights in frustration, but where do they go? They, they can't just, as I say, they can't just pull over and stop out there on track because then that would be dangerous. They've, they've got to keep some form of speed because, of course, they're involved in their own race, don't forget. Absolutely, and just not the best of spaces because it's not necessarily an area you see drivers, of course, move over in that run through Vail towards club and say, okay, ole. And now, as a result, it's going to take a little bit of work for them to get up to fill with that checkup. Here's the look. Left by the race leader, then they reach a spot where you can't necessarily let them go, and that's one second lost as a result of checking up here. Yeah, absolutely. So it just goes to show how traffic can, if you get it in the wrong spot, then yeah, it can have a massive effect. By the way, Nathan Lewis, who uh, was up with this lead pack, decided to come onto pit road that last lap. And uh, so he's taken a pit stop. Only 12.9 seconds for him on pit road. We've had a bunch of cars as well. Ben Gregory, Pete Harrod, Joel Evans. Uh, no, not Joel Evans. So Ben Gregory, Pete Harrod, Billy Fletcher, 
Tony Draper and Ryan Hamilton have all come down onto pit road. So we're getting more and more of these pit stops coming here, Justin. And this is where the leaders are now. They're going to find more and more traffic out there. At this point, if I'm McFarlane or Thompson, I'm thinking, do I come down this time because of how busy this traffic is? Well, their hand may be forced here. The race leader's coming in with them. So this is interesting. McFarlane and Thompson have both sat behind your race leader all race. have been behind for the best part of 45 minutes. So they've been doing some massive fuel saving here. I would expect, as long as they hit their marks correctly, I would expect McFarlane and Thompson to both jump Phil Dennis in this pit stop here because they should take less fuel here. Also, Keg Shube, uh, there's also Aaron Rose, Al uh, Elias Seppen and Alex Nella, Adam Watson, Elliot Harper. We've got a true pit party going on here, Justin. All I need is the balloons at this point to be able to make it a true party down to the pit rain, right? But I'm interested to see what type of party Nathan Lewis is going to be able to have after his call to pit right before everyone else had to check up with the strategy. This could be a big opportunity to jump a couple of competitors here, depending on the lengths here. Well, there you go. There's your answer. So, Kei Kashube pulls out the pit road first. He only took 14.4 seconds of fuel. He's decided to do his short pit stop now. There goes the 69 of Elias Seppen, and again 13.4 seconds, and Ross McFarlane 29.9 seconds on the stop. Now, Phil Dennis is still stopped, as is Josh Thompson. So, if they picked up a penalty, they're taking tyres. They're taking fresh rubber here. This is a this is a, a, a different strategy because we normally see here uh, that drivers they just take the fuel and run but no two drivers deciding we need fresh rubber out there and you know what you have to wonder it's because of the track conditions because normally there is a certain point when it comes to degrees fahrenheit around 80 or so degrees where drivers say okay we can go for a comfortable double stint or a triple stint in, in depending on the length of the race right now it's up towards 90 degrees fahrenheit for reference sake so it's pretty toasty and it makes it borderline. I'm curious about the fall off now as a result of this for the drivers who are going on the double stint currently on their cycles. Because if it, the gamble pays off, then there's a good chance Thompson Company can gain a decent amount of ground. But is it going to be enough net ground, Paul, is the big question. Well, I could tell you, David Baker, who managed to go a lap longer, has gone onto pit road. Uh, and I would imagine Christian Rose to go on there as well. Simon Field still battling away. He's not been on pit road, uh, whereas Oscar Cooper has, has just made his way past there's Christian Rose onto pit road right now. I would expect to see Max Wolf, Simon Field, and Brian Lyons all to head onto pit road as well for their first scheduled pit stop. We're at that, that, that we're at that point where it's just a case of working that strategy now and uh well it, it certainly is a uh, been an interesting race uh that's for sure but uh yeah definitely uh that is uh, it's certainly been a really enjoyable one here comes simon field on to pit road so we'll see how it all pans out once the pit stops finish we'll give you a bit of a rundown once everyone has been on pit road and had their service out there as uh, we go through the uh here and we carry on down towards the wellington straight here so i can tell you at the moment in the lead of the race here is nathan lewis then he leads the race by 3.1 seconds over kei kashube now they both took a shorter pit stop in the, uh, the pit stop cycle so they along with Elias Seppinen who finds himself in third place all took less than, than uh, 15 seconds for their pit stop. Ross McFarlane is the first of the drivers who took a longer fuel stop there he is you can see him on screen previous champion season 9 champion there working his way through Cops Corner him, Gulbranson, Jones Cooper, Aaron Rose, they all took the longer fuel strategies. Now, the first of your pit stoppers with tyres involved in their pit stop, Phil Dennis, 
in 13th place right now and he's trying to work his way through there is an advantage of having fresher rubber here justin but of course you've got the disadvantage of having to work your way through the field here exactly as well even with the amount of fall off again it's going to be my interesting mark of is there going to be enough of a difference where you can close up what would be a net difference in some cases to the drivers who took a bit more fuel in the tanks of 25 30 seconds i don't think there's going to be that net time that you can pick up in that amount of ground so it's in our words a really risky call here to say let's try the tires and see how things fare out but if you think about it the 40 call it 40 45 minutes um for for the pits you know, for the for the fuel run mm -hmm. you've got another pit stop coming up towards the end of the race if you're on fresher rubber you've got 45 minutes fresher rubber out there is josh thompson working his way past that was uh, ben gregory he oh no he's behind gregory i believe that was elliot harper that he was trying to work his way past there there's gregory in front of him right now so I've not seen this tactic for quite a while. Um, by the way, good job. Um, good, good worth pointing out the, uh, the Phoenix Wild. Thank you very much. Silverstone is very hard on the tyres. We did see a few, few punctures happen with drivers trying to uh, zero stop the tyres. And so uh, you know, it can be tough on tyres around this track because you have got a lot of medium to high speed corners here, haven't you? So uh, definitely it is um, worth it. Um, by the way, we're getting asked, asked about the I ratings. The average I rating of this series, by the way, in this session is 34.11. So 3,411 for the average I rating. The top I rating of somebody from the session today, I would say, would be Keiko Shube with a 9-2-3-1. So, uh, yeah, this is a private championship. You don't, it's not an official series. This is a private championship. It's the World GT Championship. And uh, for details of the championship, go to WGTC.UK. More information about the championship, so uh, do check out their website you've got all the information that you would need for this championship including their point standards so you can keep up to date with how this championship is going it is a full championship at the moment so uh, it's great to see we have 56 cars start this race we've had got had three retirements from this race so far that's andy shield james whitehouse and jack sedgwick all out of this race so far but you are watching the world gt championship here on racebook tv my name is paul smith i'm joined in the commentary booth for this round of the championship by justin prince and uh, justin we've had that the opening pit stop now we're seeing the different styles of uh, strategy with some people going for the short fuel now and then the longer fuel later on some going for the long fuel now and the short fuel later on and then you've got some going for a full tank and tires and the most intriguing strategy I've seen as some drivers have had a trouble. I believe that's Turnbull who's having to claw his way out of the grass. And I'm wondering if he took that year one machine with him. Turnbull then. Oh, he was having a recovery drive out there. He is a replay of what's it? Oh, the year one car was returning back to the track. Oh, Turnbull's just turned in. The car was there. Now, I will say. That year one car had returned to the track safely in my opinion and Turnbull should have I know it's not the easiest to see but he should have realized that the car was there and it was Nicholas Salaputis who ended up again where do you go in that situation I'm not quite sure I just don't think he was expecting a car to rejoin who was overrunning part of the course there at that moment so you just need to be prepared for those types of situations, knowing he has to come back on the track eventually. He can't just park it into the runoff area and say, oh, lay until there's the opening. There's not a lot of openings built up around this racetrack at this point as well. A lot of these cars are now where there's maybe a 20 car length difference at the very most between one of them around Silverstone right now. Well, as we see the drivers heading their way through, 
the right-hander at club corner, end of the lap. As I say, 10 years old is this layout. It still feels new to me. And again, some people do say that I'm a little bit old in some racing terms, but there you go. As uh, we see, Ben Gregory trying to uh, fight his way with Adam Watson, and he's got behind him Elliot Harper. So I did point out the top 10 of the race overall, just to give you up to date on the Pro-Am standings. It's Aaron Rose in eighth place, ahead of Tim Perry with Joel Evans. They're all eighth, ninth and tenth place overall here. But uh, they are currently uh, different pit stop cycles for each one of those drivers in that Pro-Am standings. Your Am standings, by the way, Max Wolf up six positions up to 26 overall in this race. We've got Tony Draper in 30th place overall. And then your next Am driver is going to be Ryan Hamilton in 33rd place. So that's the, uh, the top three of the Am drivers out there as well so uh, plenty to see here plenty for these drivers to uh to to fight with and it's 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 a great championship is this justin when you have those different categories of drivers being able to fight for their own championship it really gives everybody something to fight for in a series like this absolutely it allows you to think about possibilities strategy as well it also in turn allows you to showcase what you can do against various different talent levels to see okay how do we fare out against this team and how does this drummer fare out against this our competitor a lot of opportunities for growth as a result of this to be able to feel things out and for some it's an opportunity to learn some of the up-and-comers across the on racing service in general so it's a great opportunity to showcase you can do this in this car and move up the ranks in a series such as this one. Yeah, so I mean, you make a very good point there about learning as Phil Dennis just moves up another place up into the top 10, manages to get himself ahead of Joel Evans then, so switch positions for the Vulcan Sim Racing car. Here's Matt Bunn in the 3M UK car. And that's what you call carrying too much speed into Brooklyn's corner right there matt he's not nicknamed matt spun for no reason and he decided to uh, take it uh, back to the pit lane so i think his day is done to be fair he'll be uh, extremely tired out there because as well as having a day job and as well as uh, as administrating this championship he's also got a newborn just a couple of weeks old so uh, congratulations to matt and the family and uh, maybe some sleepless nights for him justin showing there with uh, not being able to kick the car on the track yeah, it can be so difficult to be able to raise a child, not someone who has a child. I will say, though, knowing family members and knowing race others, it takes a lot of effort to be able to raise a newborn and assist with everything along those processes. And it takes a lot of time out of you two to prepare for racetracks such as this, to be able to get your rhythm down, your marks down, as well as the preparation with your teammates. So it all comes down in turn to that amount of time it can be pretty tricky but it's also something that's very critical to be able to find that balance in it speaking of balance looks like phil is finding that speed and balance right now in his car keep in mind i've noticed this just now paul as well in the past couple laps the drivers in some cases are running four tenths to up to one second slower than the competitors who took tires during that first pit stop window yeah, it's really showing now, isn't it? Just that, that pace difference in those uh, those drivers who didn't take tyres compared to those that didn't. And the thing is, the further you go into this race, um, the, the worse those tyres will be getting as well if you didn't take tyres. And Ash Sutton, can he hold on to it? Wow! Save of the day, I think, right there, because that is not an easy thing to do in that Lamborghini. Well, there's that real world experience coming in from Sutton. It takes a lot to be able to control these cars as I believe one car he may have been passing ended up stopping as we take a look at some of the other drivers in sector one. But it takes a lot to be able to properly save the car without overcorrecting, going into a full reverse lock and getting yourself stuck in that case. 
it takes a lot to balance that out as the interesting consideration here by the way is the driver you just see on screen joel evans he was one of the drivers with early trouble had to come in off cycle he's already approaching based on the numbers the net window to make it towards the end already so he's someone that we have to keep an eye on because he might have to push it all the way to the end in a couple laps or so yeah certainly he uh he is certainly somebody to look, look out for that is for sure he took 12.9 seconds in his pit stop when he did pit it's 20 laps coming up to 21 laps on the stint if he can get to around that that 44 43 minute mark he can make it to the end of the race with this one so uh, he's just allowed josh thompson to go through i think he's doing a little bit of fuel saving here or is he well he's coming onto pit road so oh he's right on the threshold here isn't he justin to make it to the end we've seen maybe only two to three cars make it 23 laps or so so for joel evans he's gonna need to be perfect on fuel safe he actually only made it 21 on this stint as well in our words he's in that danger zone right now that's going to be very difficult to find that teetering effect of because of his earlier troubles remember had to take that faster pair early well here's ash sutton don't say it's take two or is this just another replay from a different angle it's just enough oh no it isn't mm. that's the second time that he's had a spin through beckett and this time wasn't able to hold on to the spin did a good job to those following him through to avoid the stationary sutton at this point, I think Sutton might be where he's overcooked the tires because of all those slides. You have to keep yeah. those temperatures in check, and it's not easy to recover those temperatures, if not near impossible. So in our words, Sutton's going to be battling with that the rest of the way, depending on how the strategy fares out. I'm going to ask our lovely producer, Hugo Lewis, to be able to put the weather conditions up on screen right now because I'm interested to see what the track temperature is actually out there on track officially because these drivers, they've been pushing out. There you go. It is a complete, it's a partly cloudy sky and 33 degrees track temperature as Nathan Lewis comes onto pit road here. So, Justin, you, you spotted this as Elias Seppinen as well. They're right on the cusp here of being able to make it to the end. They should be able to make it with 44 minutes. And Lewis was among the drivers, I know that for sure, who took the shorter fuel. So, it looks like the game plan is simple. Try and go short, short, and then full tank, it looks like. Because if you can make it 22, like a majority of the field was able to do again... You're golden. So at the very least, it looks like they don't want to risk taking a late pit stop with about 10 estimated laps to go or so. Jesse Jones and Oscar Cooper are on pit road as well. So those drivers who took the short stop, they've only been able to go about eight, nine laps here in all of this. They're taking their longer pit stop right now. The, here's the intriguing part. Have they had teammates talking to them, Justin, to say, might be worth taking some fresh tires here or are they committed well nathan lewis 44 seconds he's out and away we'll have to wait and see what the other pit stop times are but i'd be tempted to think about fresh tires although it's a bit, a bit late you can't really take the most advantage of them now the track is getting to its hottest point yet but it's not like where before you could take advantage of like thompson or Dennis to be able to play things out that way and see, okay, can we make this work on the fresher rubber? I'm very much curious, though, how this all plays out in terms of the strategies, because depending on where they cycle route, there's going to be a decent amount of fuel save to make sure that you get the about to that 22 lap mark to make sure you get the next two, three minutes in the tank. Okay, Kashube, on to pit road, your race leader. So he's the next one of the short pitters from the opening round of pit stops. He's on to pit road. There you see him on the right-hand side of your screen. By the way, we do continue to see this battle on the left-hand side. And that is further down your order. Adam Hedgecock in 26, battling away with Chris Wood. And Mike Horder is there with him as well. There's Kashube looking for his pit stall. Make sure you get it right miss your pit stall and then you have to reverse it costs you time costs you place and well he's managed to get it down nicely there's somebody else on the pit road but they're furthest down that's Anders Ankerson 
and Simon Field onto pit road as well. So uh, those guys are heading onto pit road right now, but Shube and Ben Gregory now, the latest one to come onto pit road. He was in for short fuel, like Adam Watson as well. So these final pit stops are happening here. Kashube, I'll be interested to see, does he take any tyres? I don't think anybody in this pit stop really wants to take tyres now, Justin. And I just don't know if there's going to be enough time to be able to capitalise on it at this point. Now, I'm curious in this end. I, did I just see it's, that right? Yep. I think he's on yeah, the jacks. So, fresh rubber going on the car for Kashube. Well, here we go. 58 seconds. That's uh, yeah, that's about right for a, for a full stint there. Where's he going to come out? He's going to come out around about uh, 15th place. But he's had his second pit stop. Nathan Lewis, who has had two pit stops, is in 11th place right now. So no tyres for Lewis. Whereas Kashube does do tyres. There is roughly about 14, 15 seconds between the two of them on track. That's not bad. That's a decent margin. You can try and close in. It's going to be tight where you need to be really strong in your marks, but it is doable within that range with a little bit of margin to spare. As so we take a look now at the battle for about 26 on back in their train of cars right now. This is going to be the intriguing part as well is for the drivers who are going to go for the late race pit stop, you essentially are put in the box where I don't think you can put in the tires at that point without risking a lot of time loss. You're essentially now hoping in some of these cases, the cleaner air, you're able to pull away from your competitors at this rate. Yeah, so those, those drivers who are going for the short pit stop at the end, they're committing to just taking a quick splash and dash. So, um, yeah, the, these drivers who committed to the, the longer pit stop on their second pit stop, I think they've been absolutely right. It's been the right decision here to, to do those tyres. That track temperature is going to get hotter and hotter because the in-sim time right now is 11.23. So we've not even reached the hottest part of the race here. So that track temperature is going to keep on rising. And those old tyres that have started this race they're going to be feeling the effect of that towards the end here, Justin. So uh, we mm -hmm. might be on to a bit of a winning strategy right now. Josh Thompson, I can tell you, is up to fifth place overall. Of course, he's yet to take his uh, second pit stop, as is Phil Dennis, who's in second place. Now, they've been lapping on average 2 minute point three, two minute point six. Compare that to Ross McFarlane, who did not take tyres, who's leading this race at his first pit stop. He's been doing an average of 2 minute point six, so he's matching Josh Thompson's pace right now. Yeah, that's incredible with the raw pace from McFarlane. I think that's coming into play right now. We've seen it from his teammates, too, who have been able to cut through the pack. I think just that speed is coming out right now when it comes to that margin. But I'm also keeping my eye on well, Dennis as well, who is within 23 seconds, and he is actually chipping away at the gap by up to, in some cases over the past five, he's been averaging three tenths quicker plus on the race leader. Yeah, he certainly has. Uh, Kenneth Goldbranson is the lightest one to hit pit road then. So Kenneth has been quite a strong driver out there. He's onto pit road. We're keeping an eye on this battle, by the way. Ryan Hamilton, Paul Webster. We've got Jesse Jones and Joel Evans. Now, Jones and Evans behind, they have had their second pit stop. Hamilton and Webster in front of those two have not had their second pit stop of the race. Remember, everybody, in this championship for the longest race, the endurance races, which is what this one is today you are mandated to take two pit stops how you choose to do that is entirely up to you and that's where you get the really intriguing outcomes of this race but i can tell you now that there's certainly been some excitement out there on track i did notice on my timing screen that chris van der ness has suddenly jumped down to 47 so i think he's had an incident out there as there's webster to the inside and that's nicely through and well jones decides well oh webster's decided i'm on, on to pit road 
and I think there may have been just a bit of contact just as he came through the pit lane area as well but those cars were following along with us we go up a little bit up the road here with some of the air competitors here but now it's the matter of going to be I think it's now coming down to comfortability in terms of cycling here and some of these very strategies this is what happened by the way to oh. Ness yeah that's Sepinen Elias Sepinen who got into the back of Chris Van der Ness and Van der Ness well he's stuck there he's had to take the tour back to the pit line and that's going to be his day pretty much done here in this one so uh, not a good time out there fastest lap of the race Josh Thompson a 159.490 you can keep up to date with everything going on right now racebot.tv forward slash timing two it's timing and the number number two uh, racebot.tv forward slash timing two if you want to keep up to date with everything going on in this race and right now you'll be seeing this battle matt turnbull once again having to do a bit of a recovery drive and is now currently behind one of the bs competitions cars that's nathan lewis that's seventh and eighth place although i will say nathan lewis has had that second pit stop whereas turnbull has not so he'll be on a lighter fuel load right now yeah turnbull though but the damage that's affecting him on the left rear you may see a little bit of a flare up and some scrapes along the engine cover he's still got some raw pace in that machine after 12 laps on his stint just looking like he's trying as hard as he can to find a way around but needs to play this smart knowing he's on a different strategy and lewis is one of those net leaders it certainly is we'll have to wait and see uh, we're gonna have to wait until about the final 10 minutes really to see how all of this uh, pit strategy pans out for everybody uh right now dennis up to second thompson up to third they are currently 23 and 28 seconds behind Ross McFarlane, who's currently the race leader. Here's that battle for Turnbull and Lewis. Turnbull, oh, he's had a bit of a nightmare out there today. Incident on lap one, down at Village, and then later on in the race with a back marker down at the loop. So uh, those two corners, not favorable for Nathan Lewis, uh, not Nathan Lewis, for Matt Turnbull out there. This is a live broadcast, you can tell, as we are going to Maggot and Beckett around. We go to, uh, to go through another time. 33 and a, almost 33 and a half minutes remaining of this race here. So, Justin, I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot here. What do you think is going to be the better plan? The fresh tyres in, in the first, the first pit stop, fresher tyres at the second pit stop, or just the quicker pit stops by virtue of not taking any tires? That's actually a really tricky question because a lot of it comes down to the fuel calculations too from these final stops for some of these cars, but I'm liking what I've seen with Lewis, but I've loved the pace from Dennis in particular because he's been on it from the get-go. He led the laps in, during that first stint. He's been able to capitalize on the track position he's got the fresher tires i'm liking what i've seen from dennis because out of the drivers who are on that cycle he's been really the only one i've seen in the 98 who's been consistently getting faster and faster and faster and chipping away at that gap i think that's going to help him for the closing stages it certainly is i can tell you right now his average last five lap pace uh is a two minutes 0.299 compare that to Ross McFarlane the race leader of a two minutes 0.777 and a Josh Thompson of a two minutes 555 so Phil Dennis on average lap time is the fastest driver out there at the moment but Nathan Lewis I can tell you his most recent five, last five laps bear in mind he's not on any fresh rubber was two minutes 0.307 so that's his average over the last five laps out, out, out the pit lane so nathan lewis is really pushing that car considering it's on tires that started this race here justin yeah that's one of the reasons that i liked what i was seeing from lewis in particular it's mainly the consistency with these groupings of cars i've noticed 
that have been costing him at a time. He's been floating around that 47 seconds back mark for a decent chunk of time right now. And I think as long as he doesn't overexert himself with the battles going on around him and in front, he might be able to a great spot. It's essentially going to come down to Pit Delta and the raw pace in the closing stages on how this plays out now with a lot of these cars. Tim Perry then working his way past Century Sim Racing's Andy Archer. And there's Tom Stevens in the Evo SR car, not that far behind either. So again, battling down in the field, 30th, 31st, 32nd. That's a Pro-Am now leading that cackle of cars having made his pet second pit stop, Tim Perry. Now Tim Perry in that uh, Three Spires car, 54.8 seconds on his pit stop. So I do think he's taken tyres uh, in that one. Uh, Andy Archer, his first pit stop was 57.4. So he was one of the three or four that did take tyres in that first pit stop. Whereas Tom Stevens took a longer fuel stop, no tyres at that little gaggle of cars as well. So, yeah, it's... it's the net, the net loss in the pit lane, it isn't that bad here, is it? Because you cut so much of that final section of the track, you, you head onto pit road straight on rather than turning left into club. Yeah, but it's also such a slow pit lane too when you consider that because you have to go from your race speed to 34 miles per hour. And that's a tricky thing to do, first of all. And second, that whole cutoff for much of that lane is a slow crawl to be able to make your way towards the actual front stretch to be able to get yourself to the pit boxes. So it's a balancing act in part, but it's also where, yes, you have that big cut. It's still going to be tight. I'm looking towards some of the deltas for some of the drivers who had quick, quick stops. It's looking like it's a great spot for Lewis, as some people may point out based on the delta between Dennis and Lewis in particular, based on the timing. Well, I hope I hope that our race spot TV colleague Peter McKay is enjoying this action whilst he's recuperating from becoming the Bionic Man, because this is certainly giving you some exciting action. So the question here is, who is going to be the last man standing at the end of this race when it ter in terms of race victory? Well, we're going to have to wait and see how that one all pans out. 20 mi 20 mi 29 minutes remaining of this race. It is still Ross McFarlane who leads this one ahead of Phil Dennis and Josh Thompson. Here's a battle for sixth place. We've got Billy Fletcher, Nathan Lewis, who, of course, is the first of the cars who's taken two pit stops. Matt Turnbull and David Baker in ninth place. Now, Lewis in this run here, Justin, he can't afford to get stuck behind Billy Fletcher here. Yeah, especially with how busy these drivers have been battling and some of the traffic ahead. This is costing him a little bit of time. He ran a 201 flat last time by Fletcher, a 2017. You can tell at the run Lewis is trying to get, he's trying to find a way to wind it up, be able to build enough of a slipstream to get himself side by side. Just can't build up the run quite yet to make this move. To head on down towards Cop's corner. No move being made there. It's all about the run out the corner. Can you carry the speed? In towards Maggots and then Beckett's. Left, right, left again. You're always slowing down through this part of Beckett's. Right again. Be careful not to cut too much of that curb on the right hand side. Through Chapel, the left hander onto the hangar straight. And look at that immediately. Billy Fletcher pulling over to the left hand side. He was trying to break the draft, but it doesn't matter here because Nathan Lewis has moved up into sixth place in that battle. Nice, we well done. And now the tricky part is there's a of cars battling for position in the 30s and 40s just up the road from him too. So he's going to have to be careful on how he approaches those drivers to be able to get himself up to Elliot Harper. Yeah, certainly it's, uh, it's that traffic management that you've got to be able to deal with. And look at Anders Ankerson then. He's got Michael Blake in front of him. Chris Van Der Ness, who's managed to find his way out of the gravel trap on the wall at the store corner in 41st and Ryan Hamilton 
who's taken his second pit stop in 40 seconds. Anders Ankerson, by the way, has taken three pit stops in this race. Dive to the inside of the loop. A little bit of contact from Hamilton on the Evo SR car. And Chris Van der Ness trying to move his way forward in this little gaggle of cars. And Lewis, Dave Lewis, is getting hung up in all of this. Uh, latest pit stop, by the way, Chris Wood is on to pit road right now for his oh. second pit stop. Look at that send for Lewis, though, heading into Brooklyn's, and now he's making contact. Oh, he can't afford this at all, Justin. He really cannot. In fact, Ryan Hamilton has made his way back past in that uh, no man sim racing car. And well, Lewis is getting very frustrated. The problem is, for Nathan Lewis, these two cars in front of him are both battling for position. He's going to make his way past the Nomad car. That's going to allow some of the others to come and lap him. Oh, the Temple nearly got turned across by that Lamborghini, but able to uh, get past. But Nathan Lewis is getting increasingly frustrated here. And I think McFarlane may have noticed because he's just ducked down to the lane. So the strategy window has opened up and this is going to be critical because it's going to be tight with the Delta between him and Lewis on this racetrack. And for Lewis, he can't afford to be held up right now, especially with this cycle right now coming into play. Here we go then. Pit stop strategy coming to play. Ross McFarlane, he's done so well in the endurance races in the past. He's finished his pit stop. He's on his way out of the pit box, I can tell you right now. So he should have the lead over. There we go. You can see him on the right-hand side of your screen. All on his own, Ross McFarlane is in fourth place overall right now. But he's come out ahead, crucially ahead, of Nathan Lewis and all of that. So Lewis now is 14 and a half seconds behind Ross McFarlane there, so uh, it's not quite panned out for Nathan here. It hasn't, especially with the battles. It's really cost him with the 2022 last time by, and him running about one second slower at times compared to Ross McFarlane with these battles, I think is really going to be critical. It'd be at least half that distance if it wasn't for some of the battling and some of the traffic now for Lewis. And that's going to be very critical now because now all the attention i think turns towards how things play out with some of the fresher tires and deltas now between dennis and thompson who are still one two and still have to come in soon yes there's battling then turnbull out of the pits losing the position to kenneth gold branson then to gold branson who of course went longer that last pit stop out ahead You've got Oscar Cooper behind, you've got David Baker and Jesse Jones as well behind them battling it out. So David Baker has just been on pit road this time. So uh, pit stops ongoing. This is where the second pit stop is happening for all those drivers right now. But that has been such a huge stint from Ross McFarlane. And the thing is, he's only 16 seconds behind your race leaders is Ross McFarlane. So uh, I wouldn't count him out of an overall race win here, Justin. I'm not counting him out either at this point. I'm just curious on how Phil's pace would be on the lighter car at this point with the fresher tires. He is still turning faster lap times than McFarlane overall. But again, the balance is, is there going to be enough time on the stopwatch to close in and have a realistic shot? That's the real risk with the strategy call they made with the tires after having such a dominant car during that first stint. Well, Nathan Lewis, don't forget, did not take tires in either of his pit stops. Keiko Shube and Elia, uh, well, Keiko Shube is the first of the drivers who did take pit stops this most recent pit stop. Elias Seppen and I don't think by looking at our timings i don't think he did take tires uh looking down the order here who else was it that took tires in that pit stop uh i'm struggling to uh, actually see who else did actually looking at that but kashube we know definitely did take tires in the second pit stop and it's not really panning out for him at the moment although saying that a couple of drivers in front of him have yet to pit in all of this so um the, the strategy play is going to be huge in all of this and uh, you make sure you don't go anywhere in all of this. Aaron Rose, who's ahead of Ross McFarlane, this is a battle for position here. 
because Aaron has yet to take his second pit stop. There he is. He's your leading Pro-Am driver in all of this at the moment. He's got Ross McFarlane making a move on him. If I'm Aaron, I don't fight that one too hard. That's not the driver that, you, um, that you're fighting there. Yeah, right now, keep in mind, Aaron Rose has about an 11 second gap between him and Elliot Harper. It's been a brilliant race, a quiet race for Aaron Rose. But sometimes you need things to go quietly, Paul, because if it's action-packed, busy, crazy, that can lose you time, that can put you into risk. And sometimes you just like to be able to go and cruise and be able to pull away while the others have that action-packed moment. Well, Aaron Rose has had that quite a race that the start, uh, in the first part of the race, I didn't even realize he was that far up the field <laughs> for your pro-am. So uh, yeah, it's working out brilliantly so far for him in all this. So driver's still yet to pit here when we're just under the 21 minute mark. Phil Dennis, Josh Thompson, uh, then you've got Aaron Rose, Elliot Harper, Billy Fletcher, Ross Nicholson, and that's it for your top 10 who have yet to pit in all of this yet so um, it's all eyes really in terms of the overall win on phil dennis and josh thompson to see whether they can make that strategy work they have been pulling ahead of ross mcfarlane here with that slightly fresher rubber and lighter cars don't forget as well here's a battle an interesting battle still ongoing then kevin school branson Matthew Turnbull, David Baker, and Jesse Jones, they're all fighting out for 50 through to 18. I can tell you we have got 50 cars out of 56 still running in this race. Those cars that have retired, Lewis Archer, Ash Sutton, Matt Bunn, Andy Scheel, James Whitehouse, and Jack Sedgwick all out of this race so far. But yeah, 20 minutes remaining. We've got battling still ongoing. We've got a battle for uh, fifth place. We've got a battle for eighth place. We've got a ba this battle here that we're looking at for 15th place. Absolutely intriguing to see how this all turns out as Nathan Lewis trying to make some moves. And it's he's getting caught up in the traffic. He's battling with Elliot Harper here. Going side by side into Stoke Corner. The uh, Nomad Sim Racing car says, I'm out of this one, boys. You two fight it out. Simon Underhill keeps out the way. Nathan Lewis, crucially for him, up ahead of Elliot Harper, who's yet to make a pit stop here. Nicely done with how tight that section was, but that could have been dangerous, to say the very least, with that situation. By the way, you mentioned Billy Fletcher. Stopwatch, he closed in a lot as a result of that situation. Some of the battles now forming up. Fletcher is getting within range of Harper and quickly. Look at all oh, contact with, oh, that's uh, that's the uh, Simon Underhill car, I do believe. Not happy, flashing the headlights. There it is, the 170 down in 37th place. And that's allowed Anders Ankerson and Chris Van der Ness to catch up to him. But the, uh, well, the 338 carries on and all that's Billy Fletcher. Yeah, Underhill, not too pleased about that uh, little move into uh, Village Corner. And again, it's one of those corners where you can do do it so easy into that one. Seen it already coming to play so many times today with drivers trying to arc it on in, try and get them as close as they can to the rumble strips. It takes a lot of practice to be able to get that done right, especially with how tight it is and a lot of give and take in some circumstances. And in some cases, drivers think, the inside line try and take a wider line but to be able to keep up the speed you need to get as close as you can to the inside line especially when it comes towards that arena section Jesse Jones right now 18th overall the RSR by G performance driver working his way through Luffield and Woodcote the old start and finish straight here this is the start and finish straight for the national layout of the circuit onto the brakes into Cops Corner. Behind the Lamborghini, the Craig setup shop car of David Baker in front. He's got Matt Turnbull in front as well. As they wake their way into Beckett's brilliant sweeping section of corners. Onto the loud pedal as quickly as you can. 
down the hangar straight. Brilliant noise from this Porsche as well. That straight six engine. Ross Nicholson, the latest of the top ten onto pit road. The Sim Stickers driver doing a, a, a sterling job for the Pro Am. He's onto pit road right now for his final pit stop of the race here. So there he is into his pit stall. Again, he's had been enough for one, Justin. Has been just quietly going about his business as Pete Harrod heads onto pit road as well. He's doing his job hitting his marks, showing that preparation and raw speed, and a nice quick stop too. 12.9 seconds off and away. Might be able to come away with around a top 20 overall, possibly, depending on where he comes out of the racetrack. So a very solid day, but there's still about 16 minutes to go on the clock to work with. And that's going to be critical now for the drivers who are in that battle for the overall lead because they're coming up towards that crucial 22 lap in mark on their stints. Yep, so they'll be looking to the pit road shortly. Phil Dennis, Josh Thompson at the front of the field. Here we're still seeing the RSR by G Performance car. That's the number 30 of Kenneth Goldbrandt and he's got Mike Horder and Max Wolf in front of him. Now those two have yet to pit. Here's David Baker and, and Matt Turnbull. They are pure sim stable mates, but as I said earlier, there is no team orders in the pure sims outfit. Their, their rule is very simple. Don't crash into each other. And look at that, a move into Cop's corner from behind. Jesse Jones, a little bit of a rub. It shows that you can overtake at Cop's corner and they've done it absolutely spot on there. By the way, Josh Thompson, Aaron Rose and Elliot Harper on to pit road right now, along with Phil Dennis and Matt Turnbull has taken to the runoff. He got checked off the runoff area, in fact, by I think Jesse Jones there. But now the critical part, the pit stops are completed. They actually cycle behind Nathan Lewis on the racetrack. Yeah, so taking tires at, at, at that first pit stop has brought them out behind Nathan Lewis. Now, Lewis is working his way past the year one car. It's car number 70 of Bradley Hulse. He's working his way on to the Wellington Strait. Phil Dennis is not that far behind. There he is. You can see him menacing in the background of that shot. So Phil Dennis is looking forward to Nathan Lewis, but Ross McFarlane Look at the gap that he has, 14 and a half seconds with 14 minutes remaining. They need to gain a second a minute here, Justin. That's a tall order. I don't know if you can gain a second a minute at this point, even with the difference between triple stint and double stint on the tires for some of these competitors. Just that is going to be really tricky. And McFarlane, right from the get-go, had the pace at this racetrack. And now it's just a matter of keeping the car clean because it's played right in his hands. Has Dennis got a slight bit of damage on the front end of his car? I don't know whether it was just my view or not. He does. Uh, yeah, it does. Just the slightest of damage. It shouldn't be affecting him too much, though, should it, Justin? Not too, too much. It might affect him down the straights with the aerodynamics, but that would be from the contact we've seen from before, I believe, that would have flared up a bit of his hood. Well, he's heading through Stur Corner right now. He's got to be concerned about Phil Dennis behind. We've pointed out Keiko Shube in fourth place. He's about eight seconds behind this battle. He's on the fresher rubber as well. That's going to be intriguing to see how this all pans out. I think Nathan Lewis is going to be a little bit of a cork in the bottle here, potentially, because he's on the older rubber. His last lap was a two minutes point nine. Now, we don't know about Phil Dennis yet because that was his lap out of pit road. So we'll have to wait and see what he does this time by. Meanwhile, we've still got battling further down the order. Kenneth Cole Branson moving for eighth place ahead of Aaron Rose, who's on his out lap here. Look at that, side by side into club. Doors shut by Goldbranson. He moves up a spot as Christian Rose now takes his final pit stop. And I think he is actually the final driver who owes us a pit stop for all of this. I believe so as well. Keep in mind a couple had, because of earlier troubles, to take three pit stops in some circumstances. Unfortunate for those competitors. But now we're down to that final stretch, coming up to about six estimated laps or so to go. And right now, 
this is right where we see those strategies really settling in. Because Shube seems to have played things out very well. It took a 58-second pit stop last time by Thompson. Right now needs to close up on behind by a few seconds. At this point, it seems to be the drivers who elected to go for the short fuel early on in this race are paying the dividends for it. I'd say the, 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 the odd one out of that is Ross McFarlane because he took the, the long fuel at his first stop, didn't he? So yes. it's worked out for him. Uh, Phil Dennis as well, the former Josh Thompson. So uh, now, that they, now that everything's been settled down and we know what, everybody's had their pit stops here, I can tell you that it's Ross McFarlane who leads this one overall ahead of Nathan Lewis by uh, 13 and a three quarter seconds. Phil Dennis in third place. Your pro-am, your top pro-am is Aaron Rose. He's been doing a sterling job out there. He's been battling with Kenneth Gould Branson recently. He's now got David Baker and Jesse Jones behind him, but uh, Aaron Rose is your top pro-am driver. Elliot Harper in 12th place is the second place pro-am driver with Billy, Fl Billy Fletcher third place in pro-am and he's 13th. He's in a battle with Turnbull, Harper, Fletcher and Cooper. Your AM drivers, your top top AM driver is Max Wolf in 20th place. He has got a nice few positions over the next AM driver who is Tony Draper down in 32nd place who's uh, not that far ahead of Brian Lyons in 33rd place. Uh, in third place, but Andy Archer is the third place of the AM drivers down in 34th place. So that's the top three of each of your class of driver. Oscar Cooper right now we're looking at looking at the back of Billy Fletcher's Lamborghini and his teammate Elliot Harper ahead as well. So the two of those battling away. They'll be working together here, Justin, and Oscar Cooper. The RSRB G Performance cars will be uh, cursing that as David Baker and Jesse Jones swap positions there. And keep in mind, differences on cycles there. Baker will light our car with 12 seconds in the pit lane. Much longer stint now for Jones, who's got a heavier race car. So those are the differences as well as some of the cars, I think, in terms of the manufacturing coming to play just that touch fit because the Porsches we talked about it were struggling with that rear grip the early stages of this race and so we're starting to see that come into play just that touch fit for these final nine minutes or so they come through Cops Corner down into Maggots and then Beckett I could tell you the first ever time I visited Silverstone I stood on the entry to Maggots 1995 it was, oh, there's a recovering Simon Underhill coming back onto the road. That will just compromise Jesse Jones's run. But yeah, I stood on the uh, on the entry to Maggots. Uh, it was Saturday qualifying day. It was a damp circuit. And Jean Alesi going flat out into Maggots in his uh, Ferrari 412 T2. The screaming V12 engine, that really ignited i mean i was already a motorsport fan but that really ignited my passion in uh, in motorsport and uh, it was a tremendous sight to see but seeing cars go through that section of track is just absolutely awe-inspiring and i do encourage anybody at all if you do get the opportunity to go to silverstone spend a little bit of time at maggots and beckett's you will be absolutely amazed speaking of amazing david baker still hanging on ahead of Jesse Jones with Aaron Rose now in front of them here. A three-car battle just in for eighth, ninth, and tenth places as Baker to the inside. Nick Rose gave a little bit of space there, knowing there's the difference in the classes amongst these cars, and this is why, with how dangerous this is getting. Jones with the opportunistic move, but he's going to have the outside line for Luffield. He's taking that wide line. He's giving the space. There's respect between the two of them. Baker will pass that back. There you go. There's the space given between the two of them. Great driving between Jones and Baker. Aaron Rose is trying to get involved in all this. Is Matt Turnbull not that far behind? It's a cop's corner. Aaron Rose is thinking, oh, I can get a place back here. But no, slots in behind them. So it's Baker up to eighth place. Jesse Jones to ninth place. Aaron Rose down to 10th. 
and Matt Turnbull loitering with intent there, trying to recover whatever he can in 11th place now. But that was really good racing between the two of them. Respectful, but hard fought. Speaking of hard fought, I can see it on my timing screen. The battle for second place is heating up out there, Justin. There we go, there we see it on screen. Now the differences of the strategies really starting to pick up here. They've actually pulled in three seconds. That's the bright side to be able to came up to Ross McFarlane, but it's not enough to be able to get them to the overall lead. So at this point, I think they're thinking big picture. Try and play things out, fight as hard as they can for this as what a break on the right side. And what a move by Phil Dennis to the outside of Brooklyn's. That'll give him the inside for Luffield. Fresher rubber on his car. And Nathan Lewis has to concede. Oh, they squeezed each other on the exit of Luffield through Woodcut. This is not done by any means here, Justin. This is going to be hard fought all the way into Cop's corner. Is Lewis going to try a cut back here, get the run? through cops in towards maggots and beckett's well there he goes to the side but i think it's going to be and there you go phil dennis taking advantage of that fresher rubber it's showing here yeah it has that extra ability to get around the corner but the time loss may have been the factor for the overall win i don't think it's quite over yet with the slipstream though lewis at the very least wants to try and defend this a touch just can't get close enough to be able to leap on forward. And now they've got traffic up ahead to think about too. They certainly do. Lap traffic ahead. Really can mix things up, but we're in towards the final five minutes of this race. And well, this has been absolutely tremendous. I hope you've all been enjoying this World GT Championship race here, the first of the endurance rounds. Here's the replay. Look at that, the respect given by both of them giving each other space and then a little bit of a squeeze there and then the uh, well i've got a head i'm shutting the door now and uh, dennis trying to work his way forward of course he did the uh, the run to indy didn't he uh, dennis and uh, really excelled in the uh, in the single seater world it's amazing how somebody like that is able to transfer that to a gt car as we see billy fletcher battling it out with harper elliot harper Bit of a tight squeeze there at that moment as well, and that's going to be a little bit dangerous. And these are two teammates, don't forget, as well. The Luxim 24 drivers trying to beat each other out there, trying to get a bit of bragging rights. The last thing you want to do, though, is, is take each other out. You do not want to wreck your teammate. And that's one of the main rules for a lot of different places. You can race hard, you can fight as much as you can, but don't wreck your teammate because guess who you're going to have to face after the race? That said teammate. Guess who's going to have to deal with said making everything's out? The team as well as those members. You don't want to put yourself in that tough spot, but you still want to fight hard, Paul. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you do want to fight. You have to give that little, just that little bit of a space uh, between the two of them. And, and I think they've sort of settled. I think Billy Fletcher is just at that little bit of edge of pace. We go back to this battle. David Baker and Jesse Jones. I mean, these two have not been separated after the final pit stop cycle here. These two going at it absolutely hammer and tongs. Oh, the Porsche back end not cooperating through Cop's corner. We've got three minutes remaining all of this, so I reckon we've got two laps remaining in this race for your race leaders. That's what I see too right now, and it's going to be interesting how Jones tries to play this out to try and get one more spot here. That little bit of a slide through Cops, I think, lost him a decent momentum for Megas and Beckett's right now, though. So that's going to be the tough part with all this. He might have one, maybe two true shots here as long as he can stick the corners. Yeah, certainly. That Porsche has different strengths compared to the Lamborghini. One of its disadvantages is the fact that that engine is slung over the rear wheels. So when you get the back end sliding, it really does act like a pendulum. There's Oscar Copa gaining the position over Aaron Rose. Right now, Rose won't be too concerned about that because he's still your top pro-am driver. So they go across the line. Two laps to go 
for these two in the race. This has been tremendous stuff. There's still action all the way through this race. There's Baker. Oh, look at that. Jesse Jones to the inside of the loop. Little bit of a hip check. Baker won't appreciate that. But Jesse Jones makes the move and makes it stick here. Absolutely incredible move there for Jesse Jones living up to the name. Actually with some of the Western stories, but man, oh man, what a move there. Now is the question though, does David Baker try and reach back with his speed he's got? Well, Baker, of course, he had his pit stop just 11 and a half laps ago. The short pit stop cycle for him, whereas Jesse Jones, 20 and a half laps ago with the long pit stop. And Baker, I just don't think Baker's got the pace here. Now that Jones has got ahead of him, that Porsche, oh, again, slide. Nice four-wheel slide through Cobb's corner there. And he just seems to have that edge of pace over David Baker. That's for sure. Battling further down, this is Michael Ovdurka, Max Wolf, and Ben Gregory all fighting it out for 21st, 22nd. 23rd. The last thing that Max Wolf wants to have happen is get involved in an accident here because he is your top amateur driver. He's in a really good spot. But meanwhile, Evdoka and Gregory are battling out. Baker and Jones are battling out. Your race leaders are on their final lap. So uh, things are, are finishing off here in this race, Justin, and it's been tremendous. The interesting thing with Wolf, remember, has been he's been shuffled around, bounced around a few times by various cards in different classes. It's been impressive that he's been able to cycle himself back up to that class advantage. That's incredible to say the very least, since he was deeper down the running or at some points. But he's got a decent gap over Ben Gregory at the moment. But that 989 that's right behind him needs to find a way in a little bit of ground as well. Well, there you go. The left-hand side of your screen is your overall race leader, Ross McFarlane. He's just got the last sector of the lap to go here through Beckett. Just got a few corners to go. I'm not going to declare it yet because, well, we've had the curse of the commentator this season a couple of times. But he is looking strong as he heads on down the hangar straight for the final time. 7.5 seconds is his lead over Phil Dennis. That doesn't matter if that keeps on dwindling down. He's at the front on the last lap. He's pretty much untouchable. Just has to get through the final couple of corners here clean. Through the left, into the right, and it's been a masterful display of strategy play by Ross McFarlane, who wins the first endurance race of the season in the World GT Championship. Congratulations to the Pure Sims Esports driver. That was a masterful display. That was beautiful to watch. Sensational stuff from Ross at the end there. To make that strategy work and to, uh, to keep it on the same set of tyres all the way through, whereas others pitted. Here's that battle for eighth place. Jesse Jones, David Baker into the right-hander at Sturt. Baker's running out of time, and I think he's too far back here to make any move. In towards Club Corner, through the veil. And yeah, there's not really, he's got to hope for a mistake here, through the right-hander, and there's none forthcoming. Jesse Jones then, able to hang on to eighth place ahead of David Baker in that Lamborghini. Elliot Harper and, and, and Adam Watson are battling it out for 14th place as they come across the line here. I can tell you your top Pro-Am driver is Aaron Rose, who's just in front of them there. And here's your top Am driver, Max Wolf. He's trying to hang on to 21st place. He's got Ben Gregory going around the outside of Stur. Gregory looking to the inside into the veil. Hard onto the brakes in that Lamborghini. The Porsche running wide. Got the inside for the next corner though. Gregory could try and get on the power earlier. Oh, that was a bit cheeky. Well, Max Wolf, crucially though, for the arm standings, goes and wins that position. 21st overall, he is your lead amateur driver. Ben Gregory drops down to 26th in all of that. My goodness, we've got one more card to come across the line. Andy Fish, and well, there's the replay. I think Gregory Justin was being a bit ambitious with that move there. 
Yeah, that bit of contact. That was a tricky spot to try and get the move done in the final corner. Again, no, they, he wanted that position hard, but you got to think big picture. It, one move for one spot ended up costing him about seven, eight positions in overall spots on the leaderboard. You have to think smarter than that, even with it being the last lap in the last corner, especially with points on the line. Well, here are your results then. And it is Ross McFarlane from Pure Sims Esports who wins this race in the Lamborghini. 7.2 seconds ahead of Phil Dennis in that 3M by Williams in XBS car. Nathan Lewis then in third place, finishes off a good podium for him with Kei Kashube in fourth. Josh Thompson didn't quite work out for him in fifth place and Elias Seppinen in sixth place. Two RSR by G performance cars of Kenneth Gold Branson and Jesse Jones round out seventh and eighth with David Baker in the Craig Setup Shop car and Matthew Turnbull in tenth in the Pure Sims Esports car. RSR by G performance 11th with Oscar Cooper and then the top Pro-Am driver Aaron Rose in the Luxim 24 Esports. Well, what a clean sweep it was for them in the Pro-Am standings. 12th, 13th for Billy Fletcher and 14th for Elliot Harper. Luxim 24, absolutely in the money there for that one. Adam Watson 15th ahead of Ross Nicholson for Sim Stickers in 20, uh, 16th place. Joel Evans, Christian Rose, Tim Perry and Mike Horder round out your top 20. 21st for Max Wolf, who wins the amateur class in his Evo SR car. Then it is Miguel Freitas, JB Masida, Michael Evdorka, who will be absolutely gutted with that performance down nine positions overall. Pete Harrod in 25th ahead of Alex Nella. Chris Wood for Team Mad in 27th ahead of Ashley Finch. Ben Gregory, who will be ruining that last lap move in 29th, and Brian Loyans in 30th place. 31st for Jason Dilworth ahead of Matt Woodhouse. Then Andy Archer is the second place AM driver with Tony Draper, third place AM driver, 33rd and 34th overall. Bradley Hulls for year one racing, a good solid result in 35th. Tom Stevens, 36th ahead of Chris Van Den Ness. Adam Hedgecock, Ryan Hamilton and Lars Van Rijn round out your top 40. Chris Byram, Paul Webster, John Roberts and Simon Nella all finished the race one lap down with Anders Ankerson, Lee Berridge, Simon Field and Nicholas Salaputis, all the remaining drivers who did finish the race then those that did not finish. Simon Underhill, Michael Blake and then the final page of our results, Lewis Archer, Ash Sutton, Matt Bunn, Andy Scheel, James Whitehouse and Jack Sedgwick all did not finish the race there. Well, we have got time to speak to a couple of drivers and uh, Justin, why don't you go and take it away with our overall race winner here today, Ross McFarlane. Yes, indeed. And for Ross McFarlane, able to nail the strategy, had the right mixture of those calls and speed today. Ross, first of all, how are you feeling after this run? Coming away with the victory by 7.2 seconds. Yeah, I feel great. Uh, a bit sweaty. That was that was a tough race. Really hard concentration for a lot of it, especially with the risky strategy. But uh, it pulled off in the end, so I'm really happy. Now, of course, the strategy was a major talking point because there were some drivers who went on double stints on the tires and took a set at one point. You were among those who went on the triple stint and minimized the amount of time in pit lane as much as you can. Talk us through those strategy call decisions to think okay do we go with this call or this call because in the end you're able to outrun the drivers on fresher tires by that seven plus seconds in some cases more than 20 seconds in the end yeah it, it was a matter of coming into the pits um just reading the tires seeing what they're like you have a number in your mind of what you need to hit and then you have like a, a b number where you're thinking you could risk it on this and uh i thought i would risk it and then as soon as that middle stint, that short stint, I could see that I was holding pace pretty well to the guys that had taken tires. I, I was feeling confident again. And um, towards the end, I knew I could afford to lose a second a lap to them because I had such a great advantage with that minimized time in the pits. Um, but it was a bit scary towards the end. I wasn't sure whether the car would hold together. I didn't, uh, I didn't feel the greatest in my last few laps, but yeah, it worked. I was going to say a few drivers, I think, already discussing potential with the amount of tire wear here at this racetrack but of course with this endurance format it brings these types of strategies your thoughts on 
racing a track like Silverstone or this endurance format to find that balance in terms of the speed and setup, but also be able to properly nail everything down, including the strategy. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy circuits like these, the larger GP style circuits where it's a bit faster and wider and flowing, especially with the high downforce that you have to use here. It, it just makes it a bit more enjoyable. You can really open up the strategy and, and you don't feel so locked into driving the track hard and, and really worrying about other cars on track. There's so much space to, to, to work with them and, and the traffic isn't too bad either. So you, you can really race clean, drive clean and, and get the race done easy. Well, you made it look easy for much of this race, having the pace in practice, having the pace in qualifying and in turn, carrying that pace over to the race. Congratulations. Thank you. Ross McMarlin coming away with the overall race victory. He certainly does. Did a fantastic job, did Ross there. One man who uh, who tried his best to try and compete and keep up with Ross in all of that is Josh Thompson, who joins us very quickly. Josh, you, you went for the, the fresh rubber in the first pit stop. It didn't quite pan out for you. Was that a case of traffic making it difficult? Talk us through the race. Um... Yeah, I guess we can say we messed up on the strategy. Um, I think the Lambo is a little bit better than the BMW. We probably should have only taken like one side tires, which the other guys did. But at the, in the heat in the moment, you stick with what you think you was going to work. It's worked in the past. Um, from my side, I messed up. Um, I went back to an old top. I struggled in qualifying. Went back to an old top, but never changed the wing. So I ran like four degrees less wing than everyone. So at the start of the race, it was fine when it was cool and in the toe. As soon as I was on my own, I was like a seven temps off Phil. I just didn't know where the pace went and it clicked like with, I don't know, 20 minutes to go. I'm like, wait, this is an older version, which has got less wing on because I was trying around with stuff the other night. So, a bit unfortunate. And I just after that, like at that point, once I realized that, it was just bring it home. It's still points on the board at the end of the day, but it, it's what could have been really. Absolutely. I think that's going to be the theme of the day for a few drivers. Josh, we, we've got to quickly go. So, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Sure. See you guys. And, uh, well, first time this season, Justin, you take it away with one of your amateur drivers, Bradley Hulls. Hello. Yes. Hello, indeed. First things first, it was an interesting race for you. You had some spins and some good recovery. How are you feeling about your recovery drive as you went, to, went off the circuit a couple times? Yeah, um, hectic race it was. Um, in fact, we're more just, after it spins, it was just head down and see what I can do. Uh, get get away with really and the through other people's incidents and luckily getting away with uh, an early second pit stop i just about managed to recover enough to get a p4 in class i believe yes indeed just curious on this how was the balance for the porsche today here at silverstone in your opinion because for some it seemed to be dancing around on corner exit it were all over the shop i mainly had struggled on corner reg entrance into some of the quick stuff mm -hmm. but um we're in a higher wing than what most other guys were I, I, it wasn't too bad and so can't complain with it really need a strong performance for you in your class today bradley thank you very much for the time nice cheers cheers indeed bradley seeming very pumped up paul after his strong run and good recovery from some of the early troubles troubles we see yeah, absolutely. I mean, Bradley's new to the championship, so uh, it's still a learning process for a few of these drivers who are new into the series. Bradley's one of those, so it's good to have him in the championship here. But, wow, I mean, we've got to get our breath here because that was a tremendous performance out there. There was never a dull moment in that race at all, Justin. I mean, what a welcome to the championship for yourself. That Silverstone for you, it puts on some great battling and some great racing in the different sections, but it also in turn tests the abilities of strategists and drivers to be able to execute. And I'll hold my hand up. I wasn't sure on the strategy at one point on how things would fare out with McFarlane, but he played it to a T with the right mix of speed, but also knowing how to execute. And he mentioned it with the A plan and the B plan and how far he could push and he was able to break away and push on forward enough to where he got that massive advantage towards the end of the race that was too big to overcome. It was impressive from McFarlane today for the overall win, in my opinion. Absolutely, and it'll be, uh, some good points, though, in the championship for Josh Thompson finishing fifth. You know, it, it's the early going here. You know, Ross McFarlane will have come off 
really well with that win. He came into this round in second place, so that will do him a world of good for this one. Now, we're going to week off next week, but we will be back in two weeks' time for the World GT Championship with three 20-minute sprint races around the Red Bull Ring. Well, I mean, if, if Formula 1 could put on a good show at the Red Bull Ring, well, the World GT Championship will uh, be just absolutely action-packed. It'll be great to have you along on August the 23rd for us here in this championship. But it was certainly a tremendous display from the drivers here in the first of the endurance races here in the world gt championship so we'll see you in about two weeks time it's the same time every monday night on race Bot tv but uh, thank you very much to justin prince who joined us stepping in to uh, the big shoes of peter mckay who unfortunately is at uh, recovery from uh, as i say becoming the bionic man getting a, a bit of his leg fixed uh, after he broke his leg last week so uh, all the best wishes to Peter. Uh, hopefully we'll be back. But if not, well, Justin's done a very good job, I think so. So uh, anyway, from everybody here at Racebot TV, from myself, Paul Smith, Justin Prince, Hugo Lewis, behind the scenes in the control room. This has been a Racebot TV production of the World GT Championship. Until next time, it's goodbye from Silverstone.